Welcome to West of Tulsa. I'm C.J. Ward, and we are broadcasting from Ventura, California. And um, can you hear the echo? 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 You're hearing an echo? I'm hearing an echo. You know what it is? You, know, you think it's a technical problem, but it's not. So what I'm saying is we have space. so many empty seats. <laughs> oh, oh, I got you, Dan, yeah, didn't I? Yeah, right. yeah. I didn't quite pick up no, on that. I, 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 I saw that. Yeah, you saw I'm looking coming. for real technology I problems know. here. That's how technical that guy is. So we don't have Beth. She's stopped doing her job, making money. Again. What's up with that? And Helm, <laughs> you, you've been getting questions about Helm, whether he's on the show anymore. Yes, people have been asking me, is he still on the show? And unfortunately, he's still on the show. He is, yeah, he is. <laughs> unfortunately, he is on the show. You know, we changed, I think we talked about it before in one of the previous shows, we changed out the studio. And because of that, we had to change our schedule a little bit. Yeah. So it's thrown it off. We were shooting on weekends at one point. Now we're weekdays, but oh well. Um, so that explains why half the crew is here. They are coming back. They're alive. Um, <laughs> otherwise, we're going to be charged with something like sure. Yeah. Okay. As far as we know, they're still alive. As far as we know, they're Suspects. still alive. I saw Beth this morning, so she looked. Oh, good. good. Okay, yeah. she looked good. <laughs> Don't forget our tip line. Um, you can contact us. You can go to westedtulsa dot com. Click on the tip line link. Fill it out. Send it in. We'd love to one hear your story and two possibly have you in studio. All right. Speaking of in studio, our guest today, David Neal. Executive Director of the Murphy Auto Museum in Oxnard, California. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah. You've got you've got a Tulsa connection. You were telling us just before the show. I do. I have an Oklahoma connection. So uh, both sides of my family, my father and my mother, were both, bo- both born in Oklahoma. So my father was born in Collinsville, which is north of Tulsa, not okay. west of Tulsa. <laughs> and my mother was born in Elk City, which is west of Tulsa. <laughs> and... Uh, they both sides of the family moved out west uh, during the Great Depression. Okay, and they wound up in Arizona, and then my folks met in college in Flagstaff uh, in the late forties, and then five of us came along later. Do you See, consider yourself an Okie? Uh, you know, I went back to Oklahoma to go to school, and okay. I have a lot of okay. friends there, a lot of connections. In fact, I'll be going back very soon to take care of some uh, family heirloom mineral rights stuff, and I plan on hooking up with a lot of my friends that I made when I was living there. I lived there for nine years, so I was in... You sound like an Okie. Edmund. <laughs> well, if I start talking about it, I'll, I'll start sounding like an <laughs> Oklahoma. All right. Yeah. Let's but get some of that going. But four yeah. years in Edmond and five years in Tulsa, so... Uh, your show, when I first heard about it west of Tulsa, I started tuning in. <laughs> I was like, oh, maybe it's being broadcast home. from Tulsa. Yeah, but, yeah. home, home. <laughs> you, were, you were born to be here is basically yeah, what you're yeah. saying. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, and uh, so you've been executive director of the Murphy Auto Museum for how many years? 11 years. Now, you actually took over from Mr. Murphy. I took over from the founder, Dr. Murphy. That yeah. is correct. Mm-hmm. So give it, explain to us a little bit history. How did that sure. all come about? So Dr. Murphy um, is a was a uh, Ventura neurosurgeon, and he retired in 2002. But since 1975, he had been collecting Packard cars. That was his passion. And he decided he wanted to put his cars in a museum since he had a lot of free time now. And then he got some of his doctor friends to keep their cars there. And through that... Uh, and it was actually down the road from where west of Tulsa uh, the production studio is. It was on Palma. Yeah. And he had cars there. And then later he moved it to Oxnard, and it was uh, uh, in a big warehouse that used to be uh, a building that supported uh, the space program. And so high ceilings, a lot of glass, very mid-century. But he didn't want to do it anymore. He got to the point where he needed to spend time with his wife, who since has passed, she had some health issues. And so I took over the museum not really knowing how to run a museum, but I'm a business person in my real job. And so I understand business and I understand, you know, permits and money in, money out. Um, and I I had a car and I stored it with him. Uh, and then he and I became friends and I was telling him about this underworld of vintage camping and vintage trailers. And he was asking me lots of questions about that. And he said, maybe you could have a vintage event here to help us raise money for the museum. So in June of 2013, we had our first trailer show at the Murphy Auto Museum, and we filled the parking lot full of trailers, and there were over 1,000 people. I was there. It was unbelievable. I didn't expect that many people. Mm -hmm. It was phenomenal. People like trailers. Yeah. People love uh, mid-century, they love trailers, they love nostalgia, uh, they love seeing things that they had when they were kids or their neighbors had something like that. And the trailer community, vintage trailer community, 
was and is a real thing. It's huge. And we can talk about that in, in re- with respect to how many trailer rallies there are. In California, there are a lot of them because yeah. the weather tends to be nice, nicer. Other parts of the country, they tend to ramp up in the spring, and then, then they shut off in the summer, and then the fall they kick in again. Uh, kind of like the regular car seat, the classic yeah. car season for most places. That's correct. Yeah. 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 But he, he, through that one show in June of 2013... He had more revenue came through the museum that month than any show he'd ever done. And that's when he got the idea. Maybe this young fella has a lot of uh, good ideas. He certainly has youthful energy. And he uh, suggested I took over, I take over the museum. Hmm. And he explained to me that there's no assets the museum owns. It's all cars that are owned by private collectors. But I thought it'd be fun. You know, I was ready to try something different. Sure. And so uh, against my wife's, (laughs) <laughs> judgment and and uh, warning flags. I went for it, and uh, that happened. That took over officially on January first, two thousand fourteen. Wow! Hmm? And and overall, you've enjoyed the process, I would imagine. I mean, because we've sat in enough board meetings, and I've watched mm-hmm. you plan stuff, and you've got a mm-hmm. passion for it. Mm-hmm. You really do. I do. I love it. Yeah, and and you can tell. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> how do you explain this to somebody? Like, yeah, I run a museum. I mean, it's a challenge, mm-hmm. uh, challenge in so many ways. Talk about that a little bit. So um, I don't go out and tell people I own a museum because, you know, that's not important. But occasionally people will say, you know, what are your hobbies? Or certainly when I'm at the museum, people say, well, who are you? And I, oh, well, I'm the guy who runs the place. And people automatically think I own the cars. <laughs> oh, gosh, you know, you own all these cars. No, I don't own any of the cars. The cars are owned by private collectors, and I explain that to them, that they pay money to keep the cars there. But we're a 501c3, and what that means is the people who keep the cars there get a nice tax deduction letter from me at the end of the year because we are, uh, via the IRS and the county of Ventura, we're, we're a museum. And so people, uh, their storage fee actually is a donation. Now, there's an element, of course, you have to charge for the, for the storage so they don't get 100% of the money as a write-off, but it's a legitimate write-off. And um, when people realize that's how the museum works and they want to understand more, well, then why did you do it? What's your uh-huh. involvement? I say, well, I like cars. I generally am pretty chatty, so I like to talk to people <laughs> and understand you know, what their thing is. I really I like kids. You know, Kids are a lot of fun. And we have stuff at the museum that really engages children. You know, We have a model train set there. We have some cars you can sit in, little sprint cars, and get your picture taken. We have a die cast collection. Uh, we have a slot car set that we just received uh, last year, which the kids just are overjoyed. It'll with. blow your mind when yeah. you see this yeah. slot car. Yeah. That's amazing. And so it's all those things that I really enjoy doing and being a part of. But because it's a 501c3 and because I'm an officer, there's no compensation. And that's fine. I, I, I never knew... I never took it on thinking there would be. Um, and so you spend a lot of time running the place outside of the operating hours that were open. So we're open every Saturday and Sunday. But throughout the week, you know, I still get mail. I have to pay bills. Money comes in. I have to record it. I have to put it in the bank. I have to reconcile the checkbook. Um, two or three in the morning, I'll, every about two, three times a year, I get a call from the alarm company because the alarm's going off. <laughs> and so I, you know, jump in my car and I run down at 20 minutes to Oxnard and it's usually the wind is, is pushing <laughs> oh. the roll-up door yeah. and it's causing the sensors to go off or oh. there's a spider or a bug that has crossed the sensor. Um, occasionally we have some door rattlers because I can uh, watch the camera. Mm. I have a remote camera and every now and then the homeless come up and rattle the doors and that'll, Just to mess with you? Uh, who knows? Yeah, well, you know, they want to know what's in there, and, you know, half the time they're strung out on something. They don't know. Oh, but <laughs> it, it's enough to make the alarm go off. Yeah. And then so I couldn't I couldn't not go down there. Sure. So that's part of the joy there of running a museum. Yeah. 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 By the way, if you hear a hum, can you that's hear it? That's more than a hum. <laughs> Is it? It's vibration. Yeah, maybe, maybe it's... Okay, so Sounds like a jackhammer <laughs> next door. I know. <laughs> we have not had this problem since we started, right? No. But we got a building next door, and we apparently they're doing neighbors. construction. Yeah, Maybe. new neighbors. Yeah. And they're doing construction. So if you we start hate, hearing a jackhammer, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it 
when the jackhammers start, you know, well, I'll have to speak a little louder. <laughs> I think Dan should go over there and say, hey, can you stop working? We're shooting a sh- uh, podcast. If you guys Very important to, one. Man. If you guys want to pass the hat around, usually 20 bucks. It's like, go go get yeah. a case of beer, guys. Yeah, exactly. Give us an hour. And That'd be great if we had $20. So well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's why I said pass the hat around. I feel like five bucks a piece. Oh, you know? my Maybe God. Maybe we could swing that. All I know is Pat McAfee doesn't have this problem, does he? No, he does not. No, he does not. Uh, but it's also right. Pat McAfee. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so sadly, you just had to put out a press release um, just in about the last week or so mm-hmm. that the Murphy is going to close. Correct. Unless somebody can come along and save it. Correct. So um, we were in a... a a lease at the old building that ran the lease ran out and I tried to re up the lease and the guy put us on month to month because he said, I'm going to sell the building, but don't worry. The building's broken. It it's, it's a derelict. No one's going to buy this place. And within five months he said, I'm kicking you out. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. So we had to go from a 28,000 square foot space to a space, half the size, sign a new lease at that space and we got moved in the tail part of 2019, and we're getting the permits done, uh, and then COVID hit. So then we were shut down for a year, yeah. and then uh, once we could open again, we had to do it with with half the capacity. You know, we had to per the fire marshal, we couldn't have the full capacity. But I knew when I signed the new lease that was five years that in July of 2024. I wasn't going to be in the museum business anymore. Yeah. I just didn't want to keep doing it. Mm. And for probably two years, I've been asking our board uh, that this, it's coming, and please be prepared and find someone to take over. And the board has tried, and they couldn't find anyone within themselves or anybody in the car community. CJ, aren't over. you on the board? I am. I am on the board. What's the problem, bro? I, I don't know. That was going to ask Dave. I mean, he's probably more connected than I am. I know I don't have the time to do it. Look, I mean, I will say this. I know how much time goes into it. Because I've watched this guy here who's done an amazing job, by the way. I want to say thank you, thank you because uh, until you see what it takes, the commitment it takes, the time, the energy, the passion, and and a whole lot of other things I'm not going to get into, but mm-hmm. it's it's a... I mean, you got to be committed to it, mm-hmm. and you have been. So, thank you very much. But otherwise, the Murphy wouldn't have lasted as long as it has. That's be- that's on you. You've been able to make that happen. It probably would have gone away in 2014, yeah, or so. So, so if there's somebody out there listening to this and they want to run a museum, they could do it. A car museum, an auto museum, an auto, auto yeah. vintage trailer. It has a little bit of everything to okay. it. Mm-hmm. So okay. So that's why when I say it's. Uh, you know, yeah, it has vintage automobiles. It's got some classics. It's got trailers. It's got the trains. It's mm-hmm. got the slot cars. It's got mm-hmm. a lot of memorabilia. Memorabilia. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, um, Andy Granatelli's got his own room there. I mean, a lot of stuff. Yeah, from he's Andy got. Granatelli. A, he's got a ton of stuff there. Mm-hmm. So it's. I mean, it's a little bit of everything. Then, mm-hmm. if you've never been there, you should check it out. But you could run the place. Not you, but somebody else. You've already done. So that. whoever so, that someone uh, is, uh, they need to raise their hand pretty quick, because <laughs> yeah. I've notified the the car owners. They were the first people I notified. Yeah, and um, a lot of them are going to take their cars out and go somewhere else. So it's not too late to tell them, "Oh, you can keep them here." But then there's also uh, quite a few who've said, "You know, it's time to sell my sell the car." Mm-hmm. And so I've actually made a uh, a document that I have down at the museum effective last weekend of the cars that are for sale. Mm. And these are long term ownership cars. You know, we have one car that's been the same family since new. 1965. Is this the Corvette? Uh, no, that, is that, that one that's is, what I've, I've looked at that car for years. I love yeah. it. Uh, that one's not, but it's, it's the 356 that's down the corner. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. All right. They're All ready right. to move that car along. Wow. Yeah. They've, they've got some great cars there. So if you're looking for a long term, mm-hmm. I mean, let's, let's, the first choice would be to keep the museum open and let the car stay there. But mm-hmm. if you're interested in a car, that's where you right. want to go because they've got some nice ones. They have some really, really nice cars. Um, I'm putting a, f- uh, a few other things on there that have already sold. I put some lifts on there last weekend, but we have four lifts and two of them went like that. Really? Because everyone wants four post lifts. Yeah. No one wants to pay uh, new, you know, for a new one because they're super, super expensive. But ours are so lightly used. They just go up and they go down about twice a year. <laughs> and so uh, two of the four have already been sold. So things like that. Wow. Anything, everything that's in there has got to go. Yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. So hurry. If you have an interest in running the Murphy Auto Museum and 
name it after yourself, right? You could, <laughs> yeah. yeah so. you, the Gabe's, Gabe's Auto Museum. You could do that, you Gabe. Totally. Yeah. No one's interested in the cars that I want to carry, <laughs> so it's all right. Yeah. Dan, you could have your own auto museum. Uh, right? All Corollas. <laughs> <laughs> all, I want to have a Corolla museum. Uh, things are That's, changing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, do you think that it, um, uh, anything would change if the – because it sounds like maybe um, the – museum is not as profitable as it should be is was that a big driving factor to why you're kind of like i'm done or is for you it's just i'm done because you for me it's long. just i'm done now there are some economic realities that have hit and that is everybody knows that insurance has gone through the roof and uh it certainly is the same in our case you know our insurance has gone up 40 percent mm, wow and uh it's liability insurance which is slip and fall but then we also have garage keepers insurance that we have a blanket policy for the cars that are in there that don't belong to us, but we move them around from time to time. And if uh, one car contacted another car or if we took uh, a car to a car show on behalf of a customer, which we've done, and we were involved in an accident, that covers us. So insurance has really gone up. And then the landlord, uh, if we were to continue the lease, uh, a new five-year lease, uh, it's not incremental uh, – adjustment like it's been for five years it's it's a monumental increase mm -hmm. uh because he needs to get market value for that space and so whoever would take over that would be the first thing they get to deal with is uh those Rent enormous increase. new costs yeah. and then you got to get more cars and now we're fortunate because the museum does have some cars we own so it seems like uh, november december of every year we get a we get people calling want to donate something and they always are in a rush which makes sense because at the end of the year, uh, they are looking at their tax situation and they realize they can get more for the vehicle uh, as a write-off than they can for on the market getting cash. And they need, the, they need the deduction more than they need the cash. And so currently we have seven vehicles or things in there that um, we own and uh, those get converted to cash and that pays rent for a month or, or whatever the value of the car. But... Um, those assets would stay with the museum if someone were to take over. But at this late hour, I doubt that's going to happen. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, so we had the Mullen close, mm -hmm. the Mullen yeah. Auto Museum, which stunning museum. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of, um, um, is it French? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of French, beautiful automobiles. They closed in February. Mm -hmm. So what's going on? Yeah, I mean, I, I we know the reality of what what you've been dealing with mm -hmm. the Murphy, but then you got also a place like the Mullen that closes. And do you know much about what happened with the Mullen and why they had to close? So in the Mullen's case, uh, Peter Mullen, very nice man, I had met him. He passed away, and that's all his collection. And uh, it's just a matter of nothing in place to continue it the way it is. And so uh, those a few of those cars were pre-sold, but then there was a a party there recently on a Sunday night, a big auction company came in and a big catered event and they were showing off some of the cars that are going to be cataloged and sold. And that amazing one of a kind collection is going to be dispersed to the world and they'll never be, they'll, they'll never be back in the, in the same together again in the one, in one spot. Those are all going to go to private. Collections. Now, and, and I'm wondering, is this part of maybe a trust that it, they had to be sold off or did, was there, it, do you know, I don't, you may not know this, but was there a, a point where Somebody could have stepped in and taken over for Mr. Mullen and kept the collection together, and that just didn't happen, almost like what you're, you've been faced mm -hmm. with? So I'm not sure the details exactly other than uh, he owned those cars, and so perhaps there was nothing in place for a family to continue because he also th th they also owned the building. Okay. And so uh, that used to, ironically, that used to be the Otis Chandler building. You know, Otis Chandler, yeah. the LA Times. LA Times, yeah. He had a big collection of, of his own cars and motorcycles, and I was there one time. Uh, and saw his collection. So maybe someone will take over some car collection somewhere and move it up to Oxnard. Yeah. Um, you know, I have been uh, receiving a lot of free advice and comments about what I should be doing <laughs> uh, with respect to the museum. <laughs> you know, I should be contacting this celebrity, these celebrities that everyone's heard of yeah. and ask them to get involved. You know, I should be contacting larger uh, car museums in the area that everyone knows and tell them they need a satellite shop. Yeah. Uh, those are all good ideas, but they're uh, but that's that's probably not a reality that is going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have spoken to the city of Oxnard. I spoke to them actually a couple of years ago about this, and so they knew this was coming. It just was ironic that it happened right after the Mullen. Right. Um, 
And it's very sad for the city of Oxnard because the Mullen brings in people from around the world. It's obvious yeah. because if you go there, which I've been there many times, you talk to people and, and they've come to California to see car museums. And a lot of people are from Europe mm. who come out to see those cars. We have people uh, that come to see us from out of the country, but they're, they're uh, bolting on a visit from the Mullen. Then they come to us the same day. But that aside, we have a lot of people who come to our museum within a year. So we keep a record because we ask people to sign in just so we know. So we have about 10,000 people um, annually okay. come uh-huh. through our little museum. Yeah. And, and, and you know, people buy, come to see the museum. They eat in town. Uh, chances are they probably uh, rent a hotel room somewhere in Oxnard, the collection, or, or somewhere off Esplanade or somewhere. And so, you know, we, in our little way, we drive a little bit of commerce to the city of Oxnard, but every little bit helps. And so between us and the Mullen, uh, those car freaks who come to these museums um, won't have a reason to come to it's Oxnard a blow. It's for a blow. that anymore. Yeah, it's a blow. Mm-hmm. I, and I, I'm sure you're probably connected to some extent with um, other museums around the country. Is this a trend or is it just something that we just happen to see here? It just happens to be coincidence that the Mullen closes and then you close. Um, it, What's what is it regionally, nationally? Do you even know? No, I, I would say in our case it's coincidental. Okay. Uh, er, any museum, car museum around the country is does have the issue of insurance. Now maybe they fund their operation differently than ours, but uh, I think the fact that two in Oxnard are closing by years will be closed by years end is just coincidence. Okay. Mm. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. So one of the other things you talked about, I guess we, we we've talked about the museums. Mm-hmm. Now let's talk about you and you touched on it. Your love. You love classic cars, mm-hmm. but you really love trailers. I really love trailers. Like vintage yeah. trailers. Mm-hmm. So, Wait, and you said that the trailers is what got you into the museum. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so when I was a kid, I'm, there's there's five of us, and my parents were teachers, which meant we were always broke. You know, we lived in Southern California, and we would tent camp, which when you're little, it's it's great. But when you have teenage brothers and sisters or parents, they don't necessarily like sleeping on the ground. So my grandfather, when he retired, he bought a travel trailer. And my dad convinced him that we needed to have it in the summertime. And so we would use my grandfather's trailer and we would camp in that thing. And we went all over the Western U S in the summertime. And I would see these airstreams going by. And I thought, man, those are interesting. Those are very pretty traders. And this is through the eyes of a child from like five years old up to probably eight or nine. And I, I always was into matchbox and hot wheels cars, you know, ever since I was born, basically like anybody really. (laughs) Um, but I really had a thing for these trailers. So I was able to, uh, get my first vintage trailer in 2005. I still have it. And um, we've camped in it for many, many, many years. But around 2007, the Ventura County Star found out about me, and they ran an, 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 a feature story called Towing Vintage with Vintage because I had, <laughs> and I still have, a 63 Chevrolet pickup. Yeah. And this lady came out with a photographer, asked me all about, uh, camping. And I said, you know, we just like the old stuff and we like to camp in the old stuff. And we're, we're in a forest of big gel coated motor homes that cost a hundred thousand dollars, maybe more. And that story ran in the star. And it also, they interviewed another guy in the same story who I'd never met before. And, uh, this is back when people still had landlines. The guy got my phone number and he called me that afternoon at the house. He says, hi, my name is Craig. And we should meet because <laughs> because I was the guy who had the galaxy in the Shasta trailer <laughs> in the article. So we met, and he said, you've never heard of a vintage camping rally? I said, no, no idea. <laughs> we just like doing what we do with, with our family. Back then, There was I had one son. We have two now. And he convinced me I should go to a vintage camping show. And I said, okay, what do I have to bring? He said, well, just bring what you have. And... uh so we did. It was uh, uh, just outside of Ojai. It was at the lake, Lake uh, Casitas up there. And I found my tribe. There was probably 50 trailers, which is small. 50 is a very small rally. Wow. But I found my tribe. And, and there were people just like us who had old trailers of any make. It didn't have to be yeah. an Airstream. Um, and most were being pulled by old cars. 
and uh, the bug bit. And then I started attending more rallies. And I was attending a rally in Pismo, which was and still is the largest trailer rally in in the world. There's over 320 trailers. It's every May. So uh, it'll be coming up May of 2024 uh, very, very soon. And I thought, this is so cool. We should have more rallies. So being the kind of person I am, you know, kind of like to take charge, I came up with a rally in September in Buellton called the Buellton Vintage Trailer Bash. Yep. And the first year, which was uh, 2009, I couldn't get uh, 60 trailers. But every year the word spread. And um, I have been selling out I, the year before for the next year because people just re-up each year. But that's another thing I gave up because that's a lot of work. So yeah. I was doing that along with the museum, along with my real job, and I realized I just have to let some stuff go. So mm. my last rally for Buellton was last year, and it's now in the hands of a very capable couple who are going to continue on. So, wow. um, But that's, that's how I had met Dr. Murphy because I kept a Mustang with him, as I had said earlier, and he needed help generating revenue revenue for some kind of show. You know, he had the Corvette show, the Corvair show, muscle car show, but just couldn't really get uh, uh, a lot of turnout. And I mentioned vintage trailers, and then boom, that's how it happened. Wow. Yeah, yeah I mean, when I went out to Buellton for the first time and I saw how many people, it was, it was like literally like stepping back in time. Mm -hmm. Because everybody is totally into it. There, I mean, A lot of people are dressed in costume. Uh, the trailers are laid out. It's like going back to Lucy and Desi kind of days, you know. Mm -hmm. it, it really is fun, and everybody's mm -hmm. totally into it, and they mm -hmm. got their dogs, and mm -hmm. they're sitting they're sitting in recliners and lawn chairs, mm -hmm. and they're toting back little <laughs> drinks, and they're going to be there for two or three days, right? Correct. So yeah. people roll up um, on Thursday, and they go home on Sunday, but some people come from far away, some even out of state, and so they'll get to the park before the show actually starts. They'll get to the park the weekend before because it's such work to get everything out there. They'll just they'll plan their vacation around it. And um, the shows have always been themed every year. And last year we had uh, Carnival on the Midway theme. And so we took one of the uh, uh, streets of, of uh, Flying Flags RV Park and we transformed it into a Midway at the Carnival. And we had a strong man... We had all the games like, you know, the ring That's toss, so cool. yeah, uh, yeah. stand up. I want to go to this. All this stuff. <laughs> I don't even have a trailer anymore. You, you have me sold. I'm like, this sounds awesome. It is fun. It really it's, is. It's insane. And so uh, the theme for 2024 is steampunk. Because oh, that's, that's cool. That's oh, that'll it. be wild. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, and, and there's a Facebook uh, site for this rally. And, you know, you can watch the Facebook site and people are already figuring out what they're going to do for their costumes. This is like a, like a Comic-Con for trailer yeah, people. Yeah, like they, yeah. they, 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 the cosplay, and they're mm -hmm. kind of getting into the... That's really cool. So I, my first question mm -hmm. about... Because it's vintage trailers, right? Correct. What qualifies as vintage? Is it the same like cars? No. So uh, the way I... the way I My rule was it has to be 1980 or before. Okay. If it's uh, past that, no. And occasionally I would get someone who would plead with me to make an exception... And, you know, depending what the exception is, but um, there are so many people who own trailers uh, that are pre-1980 that there's enough people to fill the rally and uh, the older, the better. Okay. So even if the years keep going on, even though it's the 80s, you still kind of feel like there's a, it's a time period. It's not just that the fact that it's old, it's just a certain era of, uh, uh, of trailer. The problem with, uh, Post-1980, everything starts to become fiberglass or it starts to become that, you know, corrugate, corrugated mm -hmm. sh uh, sheet steel and um, there's mm -hmm. really no personality. They're all made by one big conglomerate they all kind of look. They all kind of yeah. look the same. They all look the same. It's like Jayco mm -hmm. and all those things yeah. and so, so on. So what if it was, you know, because, you know, they make new Airstreams that look like the old Airstreams, mm -hmm. would those qualify or no? So <laughs> I get a lot of flack from the Airstream people because they know I'm an Airstream guy. Yeah. And it's almost like I'm a, uh, you know, a trader. It's like, well, <laughs> well, you have you you have a couple of old airstreams, and you know, you understand that airstreams are iconic. You understand that airstreams have been around since 1936. You know, you should let us bring our, you know, 2019 or 2020 airstream. And I think, well, you could probably get away with it, but at the heart, 
the vintage trailer community knows that uh, you're cheating. Yeah. Now, people who come in off the street, because we always have an open house, they may not know the difference because their streams kind of look the same. Yeah. Yeah. But to to the heart of the vintage trailer people, you know, you owe it to them yeah. to keep it genuine and real. Sure. Yeah. All, all you need to do is look inside. I mm -hmm. mean, when you look at the interior, it's like the modern Airstreams. They look just like yeah, they're super high end, mm -hmm. but, you know, everything's modern and you so on. You got a TV on. in there playing video games. I was like, oh, maybe that's not <laughs> vintage. <laughs> yeah. Actually, it doesn't even take that. All you have to do is walk up to some of these trailers, just stick your nose right at the door and go... And you know how old that thing <laughs> New is. New trailer They smell, just had right? that smell to them. And it's like, okay, no, this is a vintage trailer. Am I correct with you that? You are one? correct. And yeah. the other thing, uh, you, you know it's a vintage trailer because the chances, the high probability it doesn't have a potty. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so very true. Yeah, so that's yeah. another dead giveaway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, look, if you, so, so if somebody's listening to this and they want to go see one of these I mean, it's next month, and, and, and it's at Buellton still. You're just not okay. running it, but so, it's there, So right? there's one coming up in May of 2024 that's at, in Pismo. Oh, Pismo. Okay, yeah. got it. And then, okay, so that's May. Uh, then July, there is the Elks Lodge in Santa Barbara. That's a small one, but that always runs uh, along with the big car show that's at the front of the, of the Elks Lodge. And so there's a nice uh, trailer show at the Elks Lodge in July. And then September is the big Buellton show. Okay, that's it. September, yeah. it's like the th second or third weekend of September. What are what kind of cars or vehicles are usually pulling these trailers? Because it sounds like if they're getting really into it, they're going to get time period cars. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes. So it's uh, a lot of wagons. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm a wagon freak. I've got yeah. several myself. Oh, Helm myself. is so stupid uh, for not yeah. coming to this <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, what am I wearing? Yeah. Oh, there you yeah, go. There you yeah. go. Yeah. Wagon yeah. estate. Yep. Yeah. And if we want to really, if we want to really get wonky, um, I'm a Jeep snob. Oh, okay. Uh, so I have, I have a couple of old Wagoneers. I have a J10, oh. which is a pickup, not a wagon. And then I have a Checker oh. wagon. And um, I tow my trailer with, I think you've seen the checker. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's cool. Um, is, that had, is that the burgundy one? It's like a yeah. deep burgundy. Yeah, yeah. Is beautiful. that as in oh. checker cab or yeah. no? Yeah. It, it yeah. is. Checker yeah. cab made wagon. Same people. It's a marathon. Wagons. Is it a marathon? It's a checker marathon. Yeah. Marathon. That's, that's what it is. What's that? Should I shut you up? You forgot something again. What are you, oh, what do you drive here? Yeah. Yeah, what'd you drive here? I wanted to go get a museum car. Okay. But it was kind of misty and rainy. So I will say that I have a Jeep. See, he's on brand. Yeah, it's, yeah, just, yeah. it's just, it's just not a vintage Jeep. <laughs> but I'm, I'm staying well. And my son, who is, uh, I'm very proud of my oldest son. He's an officer in the Navy. He has a uh, Jeep Patriot. Oh, nice. And I, I helped him buy that car right out of high school uh, as he was going into college. And I told him, you need to buy a manual because that's <laughs> yeah. a lost art. Surprised yeah. they even offered it in yeah. a manual. And Still. you never have to worry about your car getting ripped off. If you uh, that's have, true. If you have <laughs> <an auto. laughs> millennial, uh, millennial car alarm. So yeah. true. Yeah. So yeah. one of the one of the Studebaker's yours too, right? That has that weird. Uh, oh, I have a 1963 Studebaker uh, wagon air. That's it, the wagon air, which that is, is a uh, so cool for anybody who's into Studebaker's out there. It's technically it's it's a Lark. That yeah, was their right. their model. But when it had a sliding roof, it was called a wagon air. So it's the <laughs> and you, the top of the roof slides back. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. Dang, so, that's so cool. It is really Have you cool. seen one? Uh uh. Yeah. If really you think cool. if you think where kids used to ride in the back of station wagons, yeah. yeah. Studebaker did the same thing, except that roof would push toward the middle of the car. Yeah. So it was now a that's convertible. pretty baller right there. Yeah. Yeah. And I've got <laughs> what, one of those. What year is it? A sixty three. Yeah. And, it's really cool. And that's a three speed. So that's a three cool. speed column. You so know, you get to have that? Oh yeah. Yeah, I drove oh, wow. it over this, this weekend. He I was has to come back when we have when we have a follow up wagon show. Mm -hmm. You're coming on to talk yeah. about your wagon. Well, you know, I, I, I was, just, yeah. I was yeah. just thinking about this. If, if this trailer vintage trailer thing is such a, a cool thing, and they're towing it with, you know, um, period correct vehicles, mm -hmm. it makes me wonder. Like, you know, with all these shows and the popularity of it, mm -hmm. maybe there should be like, you know. Like for cars and coffee, there should be invites for people that tow in trailers. Granted, you're taking two spots if it's tandem or whatever, but like, <laughs> right. I think that would be cool because I, you know, the Ventura cars and coffee, they'd fit right out. I mean, we have a fire truck, like an old 60s or 70s <laughs> oh, fire truck. Oh, that's uh, Spencer. Yeah. 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 Trailer, <laughs> trailers and tea. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, I think the trailer people drink coffee, dude. We're Americans here. Maybe if they're British. <laughs> I'm just trying to be illiterate, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, cars and coffee. But it just makes me wonder trailer. because um, you, you've got to work on the trailer like a car. Mm -hmm. You know, it's on wheels. So, yeah. you know, yeah. it's a, it has to be registered, it has to have a license plate or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it is a vehicle, it just doesn't have a motor. 
per se. Yeah. So I've taken my trailer and vintage car to car shows. And it's it's hilarious. People will walk right past the cars <laughs> because they see a trailer there. Yeah, yeah. And uh, trailer people, unlike car people, car people obviously don't want you inside their car. Trailer people Come want on you in. inside Come their on trailer. In. Yeah, that's and, where the fun is, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, I think that's where you can do the ultimate flex, right? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. look at what I got. Mm -hmm. Put your ass in that seat. <laughs> right. Yeah. All right. I, I think we need to do a go around here. Now, David owns multiple trailers, right? Correct. I've owned two trailers. Mm -hmm. Gabe? Three. I've had three. Two, two. two enclosed and one open trailer that I still have. Okay. Yeah. And CJ? If I slept in a BMW 2002, does that count? No, that doesn't count. <laughs> then I haven't had that one. That barely yeah. counts as a car. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Beth has never been like, you know, we should take the kids camping and so on. But no, wait, I mean, uh, this is another question. So I've had, technically, I've had trailers. There have been car trailers, so yeah. you couldn't live, I definitely couldn't live in any Yeah, I, I was talking RV trailers. So, like, yeah. so is there, a, you know, as being you're the expert of it, like... So I'm not going to pull up on my Hallmark trailer, uh, my my vintage Hallmark trailer, or my car hauler. What qualifies a car hauler trailer that I think is a trailer versus what you qualify as a trailer? <laughs> Big time. Nah, get yeah. out of here. If, if no, I no. put a porta potty in my trailer, does that count? <laughs> this is real. This is real people. Got it. Real you're, trailers. You're yeah, just being yeah, utilitarian. Yeah. There, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so like toy haulers don't count. No, nah, no. Got no. it. Okay. I just agree. think of like a birch interior. Uh, you know, think of a marmoleum floor. <laughs> okay, so this it's kind of thing. Basically, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, this is all mid-century modern trailers. That's really what it should be, right? Yeah. That's the sweet spot. Because I'm all about mid-century modern. My mm -hmm. house is mid-century modern. I love it. Oh wow! And um, I love Airstream trailers. Mm -hmm. I, just, I just think they're crazy how much they cost. But um, it just seems to me that that's all mid-century modern. So yeah, and I'm sure there's many other brands that I don't know about because I'm trailer illiterate. That's for another show. Yeah, <laughs> but. <laughs> There's a lot of them that are mid-century modern style, mm -hmm. right? Like the Correct. airstream, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's yep. easy. I just I don't know these things. I'm learning this as we go here. You know. I think you're talking yourself into getting a trailer. Yeah, yeah. You guys are trying to talk me <laughs> into getting a You don't need to convince wagon. me to get If I just need the room for the trailer, I have to keep my trailer at another place because my shop's too full of cars. You got a big driveway. Come on. Yeah, well, I also have a dually sitting in it right yeah, now. So, well, you know. all the more reason you should get a trailer. <laughs> <laughs> get something to pull it with. You know, one of the... Um, Vintage trailers. I would even. Call, I mean, I guess it's a vintage trailer. The one from the nine when nineteen twenty seven. That has an amazing story behind it. Talk about that one a little bit. So in the museum, and it's it's for sale. We have a nineteen twenty seven Holt travel trailer. No one's ever heard of a Holt because there's only one ever made. Oh wow! And it was a guy in Pennsylvania was an entrepreneur, and he decided he was going to build a, a a trailer they called them house cars or auto camping back then yeah i was about to say the trailer didn't seem to yeah. fit when yeah. you see it <laughs> and it the interior looks like a parlor oh that's cool and the back of it has a vestibule like a train because wow. that's what people knew that's back cool then. and he he <laughs> built this bit by bit handmade and then the depression hit in 1929 yep. and so it was obvious that there was no market for a trailer which would have cost x to sell and no one had that kind of money so it sat in his barn in pennsylvania for a long 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 time and in the early 2000s a trader collector out of uh, santa cruz was in pennsylvania driving around on a vacation and saw this weird trader pulled out of a barn so he pulled in there and asked what the situation was and it was the family uh, the, the grandpa had died and they were selling the property and this was in the barn and they pulled out the barn to clean the barn. And they told the story that this was built by grandpa and has never been used, <laughs> never been camped in, never been trailered anywhere. And was cut. It wasn't completely finished yet. Is that it right? It was finished. Oh, was it finished? It okay. was finished, but it had, it had been finished a long time before, like 70 something years. Okay. All right. wow. And, and the children and the grandchildren remember playing inside it as a playhouse. Wow. And so, uh, through negotiation, they sold it to this fella in Santa Cruz. He had it lowboyed out to California, and then he did the restoration on it, and it is stunningly gorgeous. It in is. fact, wow. uh, the Peterson had it on loan for a while for a display, but then this gentleman uh, moved to Florida, and so he needed to uh, sell everything he had, and he, he had a trader museum. It was, it was his private museum, but he had a lot of stuff in there. So a lot of his traders got sold out. 
to uh, private collectors, but this one he felt would be best if the Murphy had it, and so he donated it to us. Wow. And then we went up there, and we flatbedded it down, and it's been in our museum ever since, and it is one of a kind, a beautiful trailer, and uh, hopefully that finds a good home very, very soon. Yeah, that is beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and if, you go, if you go down there to the museum to see anything, <clears throat> you got to see that trailer. Mm. It's pretty amazing. Well, then the other oddity we have, um, we have a 1948 Studebaker motorhome. Now, Studebaker did not make motorhomes, but this is a two-ton, this this entered the world as a two-ton flatbed truck. And somebody in L.A. put a, a, a camper on it, a, a trailer that it's, you know, overhang, and it is done to where it looks factory correct, and it is stunningly gorgeous inside. It has uh, cherry wood. The guy was a Finnish carpenter. It has tile. Uh, it's been to Mexico multiple times on surf trips. It's been to Santa. It's been to... Uh, Alaska multiple times. I've had oh. that at a couple of Santa Barbara car shows, and people remember. And this that. one has an interesting name, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. They remember the guy who built it because he lived in Santa Barbara, yeah. and when he registered that vehicle, he got one of the first vanity plates in California. You know, the the blue background with the yellow. Yeah, uh, yeah. And it's big ugly. <laughs> that's what it's the called. Name. That's Big the Ugly. Name on the plate. Yeah. Front Dan, I think I found your truck and trailer, dude. <laughs> Big Ugly. And it has bay, big, beautiful bay windows. Yeah. Uh, that's one of a kind. It's like, port, like the stained glass. It so has, it's, yeah. it's a motorhome. It's not like a truck and a trailer. It's or Correct. It's a, a truck with, with a with a camper on okay, it. So it. we okay. call it a motorhome because there's it. a pass-through in the middle. Oh, yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. And it's oh, affectionately cool. called Big Ugly. Yeah. 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 It's... it's yeah. I mean, I can see where it came from, but when you look at it, you go, okay, that's cool. <laughs> but from a certain angle, it is kind of ugly. It's, but I it's, think, because it's a weird brown color. Yeah, that's it's like maybe, a putty, yeah. putty yeah. brown. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, when you're onto something, um, when you're driving down the 405, which I've done in that <laughs> truck, we went down to my son and I, my younger son, we went down to uh, a Fountain Valley for a car show a couple of years ago. So I, White knuckled it down the 405. <laughs> <laughs> and I was going slow because you don't go fast and something like that. So I'm doing 50 or 55. And I'm wondering why everyone's going so slow on the 405 because it wasn't necessarily a lot of traffic, which it can be. We all know that. Yeah. Um, but people were just gawking. with their phones. They gawking. were taking oh, pictures yeah, yeah. Wow. and they were gawking. They, it's unbelievable uh, to see it. And yeah. to see it going down the road, it's like, what, what what was that? You know, yeah. what kind of time warp am I in? You know, it's, yeah. it's just... and I would imagine you checked the brakes on that thing closely before you jumped on the four hundred five. No, <laughs> but I will tell you this: uh, when I got, once I got down there, uh, someone scolded me because um, the tires were all cracked. Oh, yeah. Yeah. but I said, well, uh, first of all, uh, there are six of them. <laughs> uh, so six I can six. I can afford yeah. to lose a couple. <laughs> and the second thing, they have tubes in them. Oh, so okay. even if yeah. uh, we had a problem, but it did, it did, uh, it was obvious we had to get that fixed. And, uh, I actually took it out a couple of times that way. Um, and then resigned to the fact that I needed to get tires and that, th that was very difficult mm. I bet. because yeah. those are split rims, uh, oh, and yeah. the tires are a weird size. They don't make anymore. And we finally found a guy in Pennsylvania who had them. Because you needed the period correct tires, you could just put on a set of new Michelins or yeah. whatever. Right. Probably not. And so they were shipped from Pennsylvania out to the museum with the tubes, and then we had an industrial truck guy over in Oxnard put them in, and yeah. the, it's so ready to go. Now it's road ready. So whoever wants to buy Big Ugly, uh, just let us know, and we'll, we'll David uh, hook uh, you up. David, you've touched on driving a large recreational type vehicle mm -hmm. on the road and so on. Mm -hmm. I'd like to bring up something that CJ probably will know and Gabe will be like, what the heck are you talking about? The big, big trailer. The movie. Oh, the long, long trailer. The long, oh, long, the long trailer. Yeah. The big, long, long, big trailer. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, Did you ever see this, Gabe? Do you know what we're talking about? Nope. Okay. So, uh, ahead, David. Uh, Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz made a, made a motion picture. <laughs> and and in, in the motion picture, they weren't Lucy and... Desi, they were some other. Just a married were, couple. Yeah. But they were married in real life. And it's about this trader called the New Moon, which was a manufacturer, and it was ginormously long. I think it was 40 or 44 feet. It was unbelievable. Like and they towed it with, I think it was a Ford car. I may be mistaken. Like a but, convertible. It yeah. was like a big old Chrysler yeah. Ford convertible with like a 40 or 45 foot trailer, which mm -hmm. is insane. And in the movie, Especially. you know, she's cooking in the trailer while they're going down the road, and she's she collects rocks and she puts rocks in the 
trailer and then he's going down the hill and the brakes don't work and it's it's kind of a comedy and it's sort of like a mountain road yeah, and it's yeah. like a little drop off and you're <laughs> like oh shoot so there's yeah. a couple in solvang um trader vintage trader people you know i know them well and <laughs> there was one for sale that was very much like the one in the movie wow. that was for sale on the east coast and so they bought it and they went on a, a site to get a quote for trucking, and they got someone said, I'll bring it to California. And so he put on a low boy, and he got it to Oklahoma halfway, and he said, I just don't feel safe with this thing. I don't want to continue on. So they found another person who would take it, and they met in Oklahoma. The other truck met the truck that was bowing out of the project, and they got a big industrial forklift to take it off to transfer it to the other trailer, and it fell. Oh. oh, and it fell on its side. Oh, and uh, it damaged the trailer heavily. Damn. Oh, that's brutal. So they were able to get it on the other low boy, and uh, perhaps the community that listening certainly you all know of Funky Junk Farms yep. out there in Fillmore. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> so they they took the trailer to Funky Junk Farms, and so Funky Junk had it for a couple of years and rehabilitated it, and now that trailer is on the vintage trailer circuit oh, and wow. it's open for open house and views so it goes down to modernism in palm springs every february it comes to the Buellton trailer show every september it probably goes to other shows but the interior of it is set up to look like the movie from the long the long long trailer <laughs> movie. That's you, got, you gotta love it and the anything, outside right? yeah. of course cool. that movie's black and white but the outside is the color that the trailer was uh, that's cool. and so there is one running around and it's right here on the center when well, if i'm not mistaken funky junk actually when you're walking through funky junk they actually have the the lucy and desi kitchen set up there isn't that one of their they did. little display areas is it gone that's now? gone oh. so uh okay. there was a diner uh yeah. there was a barber shop a vignette and uh because Funky Junk is also affiliated with the motion picture industry, but that section is is gone. Oh, that's yeah. a bummer. But but they did have that whole section. And I remember being there. It was probably five, four or five years ago, and they were working on some stunning trailers. Mm -hmm. The work they do there. Yes. Who, who's the gentleman? What, do you know? Do you know his mm -hmm. name? Who? Uh, Stephen Butcher. Okay, that's yeah. it. Yeah. And one of those trailers uh, went on Bring a Trailer. And it got over six hundred thousand oh, dollars. Oh my and, goodness! And you, it, it, I see these are flipping trailers, man. Yeah, yeah. No kidding. I, I see the trailer show up in ads that have nothing to do with with Funky Junk or who bought it, but that that trailer is on the internet now, and people cut and paste the picture of it for whatever they're doing. And it's a it's a fifties trailer, really long uh, aluminum, but it has a blue stripe. But the interior looks like a yacht. Oh. It's, it's, well, it's it's, it's an gorgeous. iconic. I mean, if if you uh, Gabe, you should watch the movie. It's really it's it's actually it's a really entertaining. If you like mm -hmm. Lucy, you know, yeah. it's a really entertaining movie. But I remember watching that around the time I bought my first trailer mm -hmm. and being like, wow, wow, drive. But I wasn't using a car, obviously. But backing up trailers, especially long, long trailers, is quite something, isn't it? So there are two movies that uh, someone must see. In regarding regarding RVing, one is the long long trailer, and the other is the movie with Robin Williams called RV. Yes, yes, uh, and <laughs> oh for sure. For for beginners, you have to watch both those movies. One obviously is set in the fifties or or so, and the other one is more contemporary. But uh, if you still get into the trader hobby after seeing either of those two movies, <laughs> yeah. then you probably have what it takes to, to be faithful. Yeah. Wow. Yes. My favorite thing about. Uh, people that get their trailer for the first time, I was one of them, is how do I drive with this thing? Mm -hmm. uh, I remember back in the, way back in the day um, when we were racing up in like Sacramento, we were to Sacramento, Vegas, uh, going to all the drag strips. <clears throat> we were so broke, we borrowed trailers or rented from U-Haul, but we were so broke we couldn't rent from U-Haul, so <laughs> my buddy <laughs> found one like that was made out of like angle iron and oh, like yeah. chicken wire yeah. uh -oh. and we took it to sacramento a uh, single axle granted we were towing a honda but <laughs> and my buddy's like tired driving and i think we're i don't know where the hell modesto i don't know where the hell we are he's like hey can you drive i'm like sure so we park at the gas station and first time driving a trailer and uh clipped the pull at the it, it uh, happened. Uh, took off took off the the makeshift turn signal yeah, <laughs> that was there that's, that's very common it traumatized me for over a decade <laughs> i would never tow 
a trailer until you know until my 30s it's a thing yeah and i was just like man and even now i still have some flashbacks of when that happened but you know hey someone needs to people need to be taught how to mm -hmm. how to back up and totally. drive with a trailer mm -hmm. that's yeah. very i think important you you were at my old house mm -hmm. i used to live on a cul-de-sac and to back my trailer into my you know rv space on the side of the house was off camber in a cul-de-sac oh, yeah. and i had a 31 foot trailer and my truck was 22 feet long so do the math yeah 54 feet now it was a fifth wheel so it's not really that long since i'm in the bed mm -hmm. but the first it took me about six months to be able to actually back up off camber six inches of clearance on either side of the gates so literally and by the Threading time I needle. got by the time I got rid of that trailer, I could come home at night, do it solo, no one back there with a walkie-talkie, no cameras, just do it because it was just like markers, like visual mm -hmm. markers. But as long as you go one mile an hour, mm -hmm. it's you know, it's when people yeah. get you know, you see it at lakes when people oh the boat ramp, oh my god, yeah, yeah, ramp. instead of a lawn chair, so, and yeah. just, so hilarious. I mean, a lot of divorces happen because <laughs> yeah. people own oh, husband and wife get a boat. You know, it's funny, Dan. <laughs> um, even in my neighborhood, you know, you get some of the uh, old. The retired couples or whatever but they've got this massive trailer yeah, or yeah. rv yeah and they park in their sliver because they're newer homes or yeah, whatever yeah and i was like you know what you know what boomer you got my respect because <laughs> boomer <laughs> because because you know that is a total flex like, like you can go to the races and be, have the slowest car there but if you can back that trailer up and park it in the sliver parking spot, man, I give you props, dude. That's mm -hmm. that is talent. That's man. why I make fun of people that can't parallel park. I'm like, Yeah, are you serious? Yeah. It's and Dan, like, by the way, Dan's our non car guy. Just I know you in can't quotation tell from, marks. In quotation no, I'm a truck mark. guy. I'm a truck he guy. He says he's not our car guy. I'm a truck uh, guy. Non car maybe. guys don't say I'm a truck guy. You're a car guy. <laughs> maybe we'll be a wagon guy eventually. Oh wagon. Well, we have another wagoneer, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, well, no no pun intended, but you know, so Helm, he is he has a, runs a page called Wagon Estate, mm -hmm. and he's all about wagons. He only drives wagons, and yep. you know his phrase is "You'll never catch me in an SUV," you know, which is great. And I think it's awesome because in the in the the period correct thing with the vintage trailers is yeah, most of the time they're probably towing some kind of wagon or some or, kind, or a truck or yeah. a truck, yeah, yeah, yeah. From, from that time period. But to me, that's. The bees need. I want to see the Studebaker with the yeah. sliding oh, That's roof. incredible. I want to see that thing. It's actually, you know, we'll, I'll send it to you. It's on our website. So you can, not on the West, it's also, it's on the Blue Pharaoh yeah. registry website. But you can see it on there. It's pretty cool. And it's it's like green and. Well, it's green mist. Green mist. Green, green mist. Yeah. And then a, kind of a cream ivory on the top. Ah, it's gorgeous. Ooh, but to really, cool. to really double down, I uh, found a uh, little tiny RV in Texas called a trailer boat. Oh, I think I may have seen one of these. Now, these were made in San Rafael in the early 60s. That it's, sounds familiar. It's a take on a teardrop, but it's not that shape, but it's the mm -hmm. concept of you sleep inside and the kitchen's in the back. But it's fiberglass. But the roof is a boat. <laughs> the roof is a boat? Yep. And yeah. the front at the tongue, the front is a little appliance. You can put a little, like, three-horsepower outboard motor. And so uh, mom and dad and the kiddos get in the wagon, and they drive to the lake. And dad takes the roof off. So now he has a boat and he puts the engine on, he even comes with oars. And then, <laughs> now dad and little Jimmy go out in the lake and they catch dinner and mom and little Susie sit there and they set up camp. And uh, So you've got a convertible trailer when you take the roof mm -hmm. off? And well, the... it, it, has a, it has a cap oh. so it doesn't rain. Or oh, okay. But uh, it's just, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a common sense approach to where you need a place to sleep and a boat. You just combine them. Got to have a boat. And right? so I painted that the same color as the Studebaker. Oh. <laughs> and tooling down the road. There's another one where, why is everyone driving so slow today? You know, yeah. There's another one. <laughs> there's another one where they're passing you with an iPhone and they're yeah. just like taking. And then that's another one where you go to a car. I took that to uh, a hot rod pro uh, community project. Up oh, at the yeah, golf yeah. Course a couple years a couple ago. Years ago. Yeah. And he was kind enough to put me at the beginning. And it was just people just didn't look and go they looked and they stopped and they asked questions and before you know it you had a little huge crowd you had a little platoon of people yeah. just standing around because you've never they've never seen a studebaker wagoneer with a sliding roof and they've they've never seen a trailer boat and never really uh, heard of trailer yeah. boat. <laughs> i think i was i haven't seen the trailer boat i gotta see the trailer yeah boat. i think yeah. i was behind the times david because with the aforementioned trailer mm -hmm. that i had mm -hmm. i bought a fold-a-boat 
Mm -hmm. if you know what a fold about is. I can imagine. I don't think yeah, I've seen Yeah, it's the much. same thing. It, yeah. it sandwiches up on itself, and mm -hmm. I actually built the housing underneath the trailer and shoved it in mm -hmm. there. And Sounds like a dinghy. <laughs> I, no, it was, it was a legit boat. I mean, it was like something you'd rent at Lake Casitas, except mm. it folded. Oh. It, and I stopped using it, though, because it was such a pain to, like, drag it out. It was just heavy and long enough where one guy was like, you know, and then the <laughs> outboard motor, and it was just it was just too much, you know. It's like, But I did wow. use it a few times, took the kids out on casitas, mm -hmm. caught a few trout, you mm -hmm. know. So, you know, I it's guess an American ingenuity, you know, yeah, what what right. you'll do to to uh, make sure you have a good time and and uh, things like that. So it's, yeah. it's pretty cool. So it's the history part. Um that I like, which makes the museum make sense to plug in there. It's the cars I like. It's the wagons. So it's my passions, things I like combined with the museum, which is what I like, that have really been keeping me busy for, for over a decade. Yeah. yeah. And the cars and the traders, that's not going to stop. You know, I have a stash over in Santa Paula where I keep all my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the museum has its stuff. I have my stuff. I, wrote my, I rotate my stuff in uh, just to keep the displays fresh and different. Mm -hmm. But... Mm -hmm. um, I'm recalling all my stuff and putting it away. And you have a couple of teardrops, smaller, the smaller teardrop. I got trailer. rid of that. Oh, did yeah, you? Yeah. Okay. So um, I had that too. You can only have so many things you can use. And then when you realize you walk past the same thing all the time, when you have a choice, then it's probably time to find a new home. It's collecting dust. Yeah. 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 I don't so, know what that means. I don't know. <laughs> I keep all everything. Gabe has the pack Especially rationing, engines. Right? Yeah. I just keep yeah. old dead engines. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! So if anybody's watching this and they mm -hmm. want they want to add to their collection, mm -hmm. and they go they to the need Murphy. To, uh, yeah. David at MurphyAutomuseum.org. Okay, just drop me a note, and uh, uh, if you're within the sound of our voice, it's still not too late to come to the museum physically to see it. Uh, we're open every weekend uh, uh, th through and including uh, Sunday, July seventh, and then we're done. And then the list, that. the list of everything that's for sale, mm -hmm. is that any place that you can, people can jump on and then so, on the website? Or? Yeah, so right now it's at the front desk at the museum, but I'm going to put that on our Facebook site, okay. which is the official Murphy Auto Museum. It'll be uh, posted on there and, and uh, will be updated. And I'm going to add other things that are not necessarily cars, other things that might be of interest. But then we are going to have a very, very large uh, garage sale to get mm. rid of everything okay. that's still around. That is if nobody steps up. If nobody steps up, yeah. correct. All right. And you can also email me at that same address if you want to take over a museum, if you have youthful energy and right. some right. great ideas. Yeah. Maybe there's somebody out there. I mean, it would be cool to see a, a young buck, maybe mm -hmm. maybe one of the import guys that might think that uh, his, you know, import collection might be. Absolutely. <laughs> well, And the one thing we talked about, um, I know with the board we talked about it, and you and I have talked about it, that if somebody, somebody does have an interest in this, this, it's not like they have to take over that facility. It'd be nice to keep it in Oxnard. Correct. But it's very possible that somebody could take over the museum and move it somewhere else to where it works for them. Mm -hmm. And they could take the 501c3 and anything else that, that the that, that could go along with the museum. Is that correct? Correct. The 501c3 is transportable. Yeah. You know, the the mission of the museum of the 501c3 is in the charter. So as long as uh, it stays what's in the charter, then it's legit. So okay. mm -hmm. if someone wanted to take a 501c3 for the sake of having one because they're hard to get and have a non-related use, that's you can't do that. Right. So mm -hmm. it has to be a, a car-related museum. And I know some people have talked about it and tried to make it work, moving it up to Santa Barbara. Mm -hmm. Well, up there, you know, you're going to have the same problem except, you know, multiply the rent times mm -hmm. four. Yeah. So that hasn't worked out. But somebody, I mean, some, somebody's listening to this. Mm -hmm. It could happen. They could happen. Yeah, they were somewhere else. The you clock know, the, is ticking, though. Yeah, the, the car culture in Oxnard is huge. You mm -hmm. know, for those who haven't visited Oxnard, um, you know, I can briefly explain it. There's a lot of people who have, what we're talking about, but then there is a huge truck uh, uh, culture. Oh yeah. Uh, there's there's a huge uh, you know bombs and sleds and all this stuff. Obviously, low riders. And the city of Oxnard has some shows a couple times a year, and they shut off the downtown. Yeah. And it is mind blowing how yeah. many cars. Show I mean, up they to still that. do the uh, cruise down Saviors. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it's, it's pretty cool. There's, there's like a, lot, a yeah. Isn't there a lot of rat rods in uh, Oxnard too? I've seen rat I mean, there's rods. Everything, there. There's everything in yeah. Oxnard. Yeah. Oxnard is like the sleeper, like cell. I mean, like there's yeah. so much stuff that goes on car culture. There's, you know, BMW has a facility there. Correct. Yeah. Volks, Volkswagen yeah. has one too. Um, yeah. There's a Bugatti workshop. 
Really? And, yeah, most people don't know about wow. it, you know, or the guys get their Bugatti service there because wow. it's tied to, tied to uh, uh, BMW, I think. Mm. Well, and would that have any kind of connection to Mullen, maybe, and possibly at some point? Yeah, yeah. I doubt it. Was there, I did did Mullen have Bug- Bugattis? I oh, think. sure. Anything yeah, French was yeah. in there. Yeah. Yep, yep, that's what I thought. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, interesting. So, mm-hmm. well, the invitation's open. Yep. <laughs> and the price is probably pretty good. Just take it's, it over, right? Just take it over. <laughs> it's, take it know, over free is pretty it. cheap, but yeah. then you get all the headaches, and then yeah. you have to get it past the wife. It costs sure. you, costs yeah. you and labor. Yeah. yeah. Well, you got to pass the wife. Well, yes, I had uh, I had some explaining to do, <laughs> <laughs> but she's very sweet and and wonderful, and so she gave me a hall pass for eleven years. Yeah. But, wow. but the hall pass is expiring. Yeah. <laughs> so now I'll be doing things around the house like I should have been doing all yeah. this time. Well, and I met her a few times at different events, and she was totally supportive. Yeah. It was yeah. really well, fun to see. Her. Maybe we'll start seeing you with your collection at some car shows and some cars and coffees. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I will. So that's. When you run a museum, you're married to the museum. Yeah. You know, I because I, I used to do car shows, and I've done a few while engaged in the museum because that's, you know, part of our mission and end up other people in the museum, docents go and take the cars. Me personally, I've been to very few car shows because I've just been at the museum on the weekends. Yeah. So I look forward to getting my collection out and sharing yeah, it with other fun. people. Yeah. That's, yeah. That'd be cool. Mm-hmm. Especially that Studebaker. You got to bring that Studebaker. But yeah. wait, for I have to ask, how does the roof go back? Is it manual, electric? How do you, it's manual. How do you, how do you, like, is it crank? No, there's, there's a lock inside. You just reach up and turn it and then you can, you push it. Oh, And okay. it just goes in and then you have to grab it and pull it back. Wow. Oh, that's yeah. cool. So go that to YouTube cool. and, and go to YouTube and punch in Studebaker Wagoneer. Okay. okay. And you'll see an ad from the Studebaker Corporation of mom and dad driving with a boat being towed with a uh, little Tommy and Susie in the back with a slide and a dog. <laughs> and they're going down the newly minted interstate somewhere in middle America <laughs> doing like 65 miles an hour with smiles on their faces. No seat and that's how they sold cars. Seat belts, what are those? No seat belts, right. I love well, it. One, one last thing about a, a station wagon that you, I think you owned it, or maybe the museum did, but it's one of the best sounding station wagons I've ever heard. It was a, was it a 66 New Yorker wagon? The blue oh, one? Oh, yeah, yeah. That oh. was mine. That was mine. I traded. Was that yours? I had a collector. I did some horse trading. That and was I a- had a Chrysler uh, town and country wagon. Wow. It was a beautiful, beautiful blue yeah. with uh, wood grain. It had a 383 automatic yeah. with a uh, gold tone radio. And the first time exhaust. I heard. Oh, first time I heard that thing start up, I was like, Whoa. Yeah. I cried on that sound. one, but yeah. that, but I ended up selling it because I just ran out of space. Hmm. And that is a very, very big car. Yeah. It and is. And you just can't stuff it anywhere. You have to stuff it in a big space. And, and it was just, when you, when you look inside of it, it had all these little period pieces you had strategically, like mm-hmm. little, the old style, I don't even call it thermos. It was like a cooler. With, it was. It was, it was a, a, it was a old style cooler. thermos yeah. in a leather carrying case with a strap. Yeah. And then I had some vintage furniture I had in the back. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was ready to go. Yeah. It was wow. a gorgeous, gorgeous car. I remember I walked in there one day and I went to go look at it. It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> David, what happened to the station? Yeah. Where? It went back east somewhere. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, David, Neil, thank you for joining yeah. us. Yeah. And uh, we'll see you at a car show now that you're no, no longer... In a couple months, going to be running a museum. I'll be the tall one in the old car. You can't miss me. <laughs> I'm going to look for that Studebaker. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's the guy who's slowing down traffic on the 405, even yeah, yeah. more than it does. Wait, when David got yeah. here, I asked him, how I'm 6'1", and I go, I, I don't look up to very many people. How tall are you, David? What would you tell me? I'm 5'18". I like that. I like that. And I'm sure the audience doesn't want to know, but I have a, a size 16 shoe. Oh, wow. That I've had ever since I was a junior in high school. So I played basketball, and the joke was I always get called for three seconds when I'm at half court. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, man. That's good stuff. Very enjoyable. Yeah. We've, we've really Great. enjoyed Thank having you on West yeah. Tulsa. Learned a bunch of things, too. Yeah, Great episode. Yeah, yeah. Really, yeah. really good Glad stuff. Glad to be here. All the trailer stuff was so yeah. interesting. Well, when we do the West of Tulsa reunion, all the guests, re- we're going to invite all the previous guests for a car show here. So we're going to have to make some room in the back probably yeah. to fit the – because you got to bring the trailer if you're uh, mm-hmm. yeah. bringing the yeah. car. we got to bring the trailer. That'd be cool. Yeah, yeah, that's beautiful. Wow. Yeah, photos won't do it justice. you got to no. see that. you yeah. got to see that yeah. one in person. Yeah. Right. Come well, to the museum a- because after uh, July 7th, they're going to be locked away in Santa Paula. Yeah. yeah. I want to ride in the wagon, though. I yeah. want to ride. 
I want to fold the wagon the, air. Fold the roof back. <laughs> the wagon air. The wagon air. Sorry, wagon air. <laughs> All right, David Neal from the yep. Murphy Auto Museum. Short timer. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's, but other than that, you're going to see him around driving in his station wagons and his mm-hmm. trailers and. You have so many other cool things. Yeah, right that's, on. That's a whole other separate show. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, don't forget, um, like, follow, subscribe. We also have our YouTube channel. Thank you. Boy, you're, you're nailing it every time right well, now. Well, you do the hand cue. So it's I like, start, boom. It's like the Vanna White. Yeah, boom. Yeah. 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 And don't forget, we have our tip line page. You go westoftulsa.com, click on the tip line page, fill it out, send it in. We'd love to hear from you and hear your story. Maybe have you here in studio. All right. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And we will see you west of Tulsa.